Hi everyone. Good morning to our Dean, Professor David Tennant, to our Deputy Dean, Dr. Heather Ricketts. Good morning to all our support staff and most of all a pleasant morning to all our new students. I see Ms. Allen, welcome. And welcome to everyone else, to Ms. Smith, to Ms. or Mr. Powell, to Vanessa, and to all our students, our new students who have logged on this morning, to Ramaria Wilson. Good morning and welcome to the University of the West Indies. Welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences. We are so pleased to have you and welcome you to our weekend program. We know there are several options for you. So we are happy and honored that you have chosen us to be the ones with whom you pursue your studies. This morning's program has, is chock full of information for you information on our faculty, information on procedures of using the library, all things to get you ready for your classes, which start in September. We know you are busy and have other things to do. And on this weekend where the, the lockdown seems to have taken us over, I would like us to get straight into the program, as I know you are eager to hear what we have in store for you. So without further ado, everyone, I turn over to our Dean, Professor David Tennant, so he can give you a good greeting. Weekend program students, <clears throat> welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences. Everybody hearing me? Yes, sir. You? Yes. Excellent. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Students, as you start the 2021-2022 academic year, the, the world seems to be in a state of flux. As I've watched and read the international and local news over the past couple of weeks, my head has been spinning. The, the images coming out of countries like Afghanistan and Haiti are unbelievable. And the statistics emanating from parts of Africa and the Caribbean are shocking. As a human being, I, I look at these issues with a great deal of concern and empathy. But as a social scientist, I observe all that is going on in the world with a great deal of intellectual interest. Students, there's nothing that is happening in our country or the region or the world at large that is not either explained by or solved by a better and deeper understanding of how human beings behave and interact with each other. You're starting your journey as social scientists at a time when social sciences, the study of human behavior has never been more important or exciting. It is in this context that we welcome you to the Faculty of Social Science. We're a faculty in which our vision is to reach, to realize impact through our research, to exceed the expectations of you, our students, to actively advocate for sustainable, inclusive development. We're committed to being caring professionals and we seek to harness our skills through continuous improvement. You, our students, our clients are the most important beneficiaries of this FSS REACH vision. Our mission is to create an environment in which your abilities and talents can grow and flourish. This is important to us because we need you to be satisfied clients, fulfilled graduates from our programs proud FSS UA alumni who will refer new students to us and who will partner with us as, as, as alumni to grow and build this institution that we hold there. But even more important than that, we need you to be the next generation of social scientists that will be intrigued by the societal problems that we face, inspired to dig deep to find sustainable solutions, and who will be equipped to implement those solutions in our country and across the world with integrity, and with a deep concern for issues of equity, fairness, and sustainability. Students, as you journey with us in the Faculty of Social Sciences, we warn you, no, we need you 
to be intellectually inquisitive, intrigued, and inspired students. And we need you to graduate equipped with the tools required to be critical and analytical thinkers who are able to dissect problems and who are capable of understanding and appreciating the theories and tools that can be applied in different circumstances. Now, to your credit, you have already shown that your heads are in the right places. Where others have responded to the uncertainty of these COVID times by freezing and putting their plans on hold, you have responded in the best way possible. You have responded by investing in yourselves, in your capacity to forge a prosperous future, even without knowing what that future will look like. And this is critical, you know, because the, the one thing that this COVID-19 pandemic should have taught us is to not take anything for granted. What will the economies of the future look like? What are the industries and fields that will drive future growth? Where will the jobs for you be in three years when you graduate? I can hazard guesses, but I can't say that I know the answers to those questions for certain. So then how can you know that you have chosen the right degree or a major or even faculty when the future is so uncertain? And if you haven't chosen the right field, how can you be reasonably assured that you'll get that job when you graduate? And if you don't get that job, how will you be able to pay off your student loan or contribute to your parents who have sacrificed so much to send you here? All critical questions, students, which are made even more pressing in these uncertain times. So what are the answers? Well, here is the answer that most students tend not to believe or appreciate until it is too late. Are you ready for it? The answer is that it is not what you do that matters. What is critical is how you do it. Let me say it again for those of you who missed it. It is not what you do that matters. What is critical is how you do it. For every combination of major, minor, or double major that we offer, we have had graduates who have excelled and who have made the most of their talents, and we have had others who have struggled. What is the difference? It is not the course of study that they pursued but rather the extent to which they applied themselves during that course of study. So my encouragement to you this morning, even as I welcome you into the Faculty of Social Sciences, is that you should seek not to simply apply yourself to getting a degree or to graduating with first class honors. All of that is great. But my encouragement is that you should seek to apply yourself to being aware of and in tune with the deep issues being faced by our country and region, by our governments and businesses, by your community, within our families, even the internal problems that affect the ways that we think. Whatever your chosen discipline is, you need to engage with your lecturers and material with your eyes wide open, seeking to understand, pushing yourself to critique and question the material and challenging yourself and your lecturers and fellow students to engage in deep discussions as to what can and cannot be applied in our current setting. Students, I challenge you to make your journey, make your learning experience more than simply a journey of memorization and regurgitation. Your learning experience should be a journey full of discovery and personal growth. If you look at what is happening in the world around us, you'd realize that we are at a critical point in our history as human beings. Whether it is climate change or race relations or economic sustainability or political international relations, our poverty and food security. The world is on a nice edge. And we need you, our best minds, to be aware and focused, to be preparing yourselves to make meaningful contributions in your sphere of influence. This is not the time, students, to take the opportunity of tertiary education and to simply take the line of least resistance or to put on your blinkers and focus on only what you need to do to pass or get an A or to try to take shortcuts or cheat your way to a degree, or to find an easy way out, to stick to your comfort zone and not challenge yourself. This is a time to engage students in your university journey as an explorer. The student explorer embraces a third of the journey and makes the most of every trip. The student is open to all the experiences that university life has to offer. They attend their online classes and tutorials and are actively engaged. They seek the counsel of their lecturers and may even challenge them from time to time. The student understands that in order to develop holistically, they need to broaden their horizons. They explore their creativity by investing in their talents and hobbies. They interact and socialize with the people they encounter along the journey. 
This type of student gets the full value of their investment in their university education. This is the type of student that employers want because not only will they get graduate with a good class of degree, but they will actually have learned. They will have learned not only the content, but they will have learned the skills that will make them valuable in the workplace. Thinking skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, communication skills, soft skills. So I encourage each and every one of you, like an explorer, to open up yourself to new and exciting experiences, even though they may be frightening at times. Students, this academic year has again started in unusual circumstances. The COVID-19 pandemic has necessitated that our courses be offered online, at least for the first semester. Our staff stands ready to provide the academic advice and administrative support needed in this environment. In fact, this year we have totally revised and improved our academic advising process, and we're proud to roll out our comprehensive academic advising program, which is a five-step process that will give you everything you need to be prepared for your journey with us. Students, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you click on the academic advising section of the FSS website, as we have videos and resources that will definitely help you as you plan your UA life. As I mentioned on the website, I'm also very, very happy to announce that in just the past couple of weeks, we have launched our brand new FSS website. The site was designed with you and our students in mind. It is easy to navigate and does all the information that you could ever want. So as a faculty of social sciences, we have planned for you and we have put resources in place to help you on your journey. We will best utilize the technology to enhance your experience with us. Remember, however, your learning is your responsibility. You will choose the type of journey that you will have. And I encourage you to make the most of this tremendous opportunity. And as you do so, I want to finish up my welcome remarks today by strongly, strongly encouraging you to make integrity the foundation of all that you do. Integrity is a quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. With so much corruption in the public sphere, it seems that integrity is becoming one of those qualities that everybody speaks about but no one practices. That cannot and will not be the way of our future students. Increasingly, people with technology are finding new ways to cheat, but also with technology, it is becoming easier and easier to find people out when they have cheated. Students, your employers and investors aren't fools. So as corruption and cheating has become more widespread, they have developed ways and means of figuring out who are honest and who have achieved by the sweat of their brows versus those who are frauds. Students, let me warn you. Don't ever find yourself having the label of fraud or cheat attached to your name. This is a label that regardless of how sorry you are for what you have done, regardless of how much good you have done since, it is a label, a stain, that is very, very stubborn. Many of you, like me, are starting your journey here from very humble circumstances. Either you or your parents or someone else made tremendous sacrifices to give you the opportunity to be here. Your reputation is the only thing of value that you own. Cherish it, protect it, build it, because if you lose it, some people will never give you the chance to regain it. So students, even as I welcome you to our faculty, let me also warn you. In the Faculty of Social Sciences in the University of the West Indies, we have a zero tolerance approach to cheating and ignorance is no excuse. So go and inform yourselves about what cheating constitutes. Ensure that you fully understand what plagiarism is and don't form the fool and follow others down a path that have led them to being suspended or expelled from this prestigious university. Integrity students is the hallmark on which your reputation of greatness will be built. Take the high road. Take the high road of discovery and learning. Be intrigued and inspired as you equip yourself to be social scientists, ready to tackle the societal issues which will shape the future of our world. Welcome again to the Faculty of Social Sciences. Thank you. A heartfelt thanks to you, Professor Tennant, for your 
message that is so full of energy and charging our students to to live a life that matters. I particularly hope students that you heard what Professor Tennant said. He said, it's not what you do that matters. It is how you do it. So I join forces with him and say, how you lead your life matters. You may have heard some a couple of seconds of a song that I was trying to share with you, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So it's not the la -di da part of the song I wanted you to hold on to, but the part that says, dream, dare to dream. And as Professor Tennant has just said, work hard. It's how you lead your life that matters. Challenge yourself, but also challenge yourself to take a path of integrity. Thank you so much. Prof T for sharing with us this morning. I see more students have joined us. I for also forgot to introduce myself. So my name is Lisa Vassiani. I am an Associate Dean in the Faculty of Social Sciences and one of my responsibilities is this The Weekend Program. We also have other members of our team with us. You met Professor Tennant. You will meet Dr. Ricketts in a while. We also have with us Ms. Kayan Henry, Ms. Anisha Crary, and Ms. Stephanie Pinnock, who are also the core of our team. So welcome to those of you who may just be joining us. And Apologies for the Dean, for Professor Tennant, who you just heard from. He's unable to stay with us for the entire program, but the rest of us will be with you. Now, speaking about working hard, speaking about it's not what you do that matters, but how you do it, speaking about daring to dream, and speaking about challenging yourself and doing so with integrity and working against the odds. Speaking about doing the unexpected and persevering to the end with pride. I welcome this morning, Mr. Kensley Shea, one of our students with the Bachelor of Science with management in management studies with honors. I welcome you, sir, to share your experience and to let others know that it can be done and it can be done well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning, good morning all. Thank you, Dr. Bastiani. Good morning to everyone, good morning. It's my esteemed pleasure to be able to be here speaking at this orientation ceremony on this beautiful morning. <laughs> uh, firstly, I must offer special acknowledgement Well, our Dean, he, he, well, he left, but I'd like to offer special acknowledgement to him, Professor David Tennant, who provided us with quite the inspired, inspiring address just now. Our Deputy Dean, Dr. Heather Russell, our Associate Dean and our Chair, um, Dr. Lisa Bastiani. And last but certainly not least, the powerhouse ladies, uh, Ms. Kayan Henry, Ms. Anisha Crary, Ms. Stephanie Pinnock. Um, believe me when I say, to, say this to you, um, these three ladies, they will be their answer to the majority of the questions, the issues and the concerns that you may arise um, during the tenure of year at, at this weekend campus. Um, in reality, just the choice of you guys being here in this moment, um, each and every one of you should be beaming with pride. Um, whether the choice was because of advancement in career, seeking a new job, or just being an academic, are you realizing that a degree makes sense? You're here and you're doing just that. And whatever it is that keeps you going, I congratulate you on taking this step. Um, honestly, I had issues preparing a speech. I, I didn't think I needed a speech. I decided I'll just try to extemporize and try to be down to earth as possible. And let's talk about weekend school. Let's talk about our Saturdays. Whoever decided to implement this weekend program, I consider them to be quite ingenious, as it allows persons like myself who wanted to pursue a degree whilst being fully employed and not being able to consider the option of resigning, applying for study leave, and all the other options that are available. 
I heard Dean mention earlier of the new FF FSS website. It's a pity I won't be able to enjoy that because I know that it'll be spunky and innovative. Um, during um, okay, good. <laughs> um, well, we may consider that um, we can campus. It, well, it allows us a convenience of, of going to classes on Saturday. As our Dean mentioned earlier, um, not being, uh, we should not be able to stay in our comfort zone. We need to explore creativity and broaden our horizons. Weekend school is a lot more convenient than classes. And whilst it is convenient for, for attending classes, there are sacrifices that will have to be made if we want to come out on top. And these sacrifices can tend to be grueling, if I'm going to be honest with you. Because in reality, you're not just giving up your Saturdays. You're pretty much giving up your weekends. Because regardless, well, it's COVID-19 time now, so we're pretty much inside, inside for the most part. But we have to, um, you're giving up your Fridays because there's sometimes you have assignments that need to be completed in time for Saturday morning. You're giving up your Saturday nights because you may have some assignments that you cannot bring over to the other week. Sometimes you give up your Sundays because you just need that extra class to get things in perspective. So we have to understand that and we have to understand that this thing is gonna take a lot of dedication. Um, personally for me, like um, my job is really taxing. It is extremely taxing and it's hard for me to find, it was hard for me to find certain time. So I remember a time when I, with my group, I had to have all night study sessions and I had to be at work in the morning for a full um, eight to 12 hours. I know that for me, I can't, I'm, I don't know if I, probably, I can't study during the day. So I sometimes I go to work, I try to get four hours sleep. I study like from eight, um, from 2 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then I go to work because it's just the time when I think I feel the vibe. So a lot of sacrifices will have to be made. And just like the Dean said earlier, being online doesn't make it easier. Um, because I, I for, for the for the latter part of my third year and, and the entirety of my last year in the university, it was online for me. So initially for the first semester, I thought to myself, okay, this, this can be a lot easier because, hey, it's online. Unfortunately, it was not. I recall like I, I had the midterm. I decided that, well, it was, a, it was, it was, it was um, open book. So I thought that, I did not need to study as oh I would study prior. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I made because there's a, um, the issue is because you're online, you think that it should be easier, but you decide not to study as you would normally, as you would normally would. It puts you in a position. So you go and you're in the exam and you have to be box shuffling because you did not study and regain the information. That's just like what the Dean said earlier. So we need to pay attention to stuff like that. And Weekend school can be very impactful because it allows you to instill some level of discipline. If you didn't have it before, weekend school will humble you in that regard because you have to be meeting some type of deadlines and sometimes the weekend school deadlines are really tight. So you have to improve on your time management skills. And it also allows you to improve on your soft and emotional intelligence skills because sometimes you have to encounter with colleagues, especially when it has to do with group work, because a group work is group works, group work, you can't get away from it. <laughs> and sometimes you are persons will clash, but you have to know how to resolve it and, and work forward for the better the betterment of your education. And to be honest, weekend school impacted me in a way, it, it increased my drive and it allowed me to realize my true potential. Because initially I um, 2007, prior to 2017, I'll never imagine that I'll be here speaking on a platform for any reason at all. So it allowed me, because when I just started the program, of the, uh, the program, all I wanted was to just finish the degree. I didn't care how I finished. I just wanted to finish the degree, not fail any exams, and that was it. But things started getting interested when I started to see um, the A's on the, 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 the exams. And then I got the first letter from F um, FSS informing that I made the Dean's List. So that was some level of motivation that allowed me to continue to work even harder. So in retrospect, um, weekend school inspired me to, to do better. 
And let me let me um, let me further speak on one of the other the greatest things for me as it regards to weekend school. The friendships formed, because personally for me, I'm quite the introverted person, but the friendships that were that, that was garnered for me um, during my tenure at weekend school, they are unmatched. Because from the first year, I had I had. I had five members of my team. I don't know where they came from, but they were godsend, and we um, we started together, we finished together, and and they were they were a blessing because everyone has their strengths and everybody has their weaknesses, our suppressed potentials. But once you come together, because it's 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 great in numbers. I know it may be difficult for you guys now, being that it's online and all of that, but trust me, it can still be done because you'll be on the platform, you will be interacting with each other. You guys can make your WhatsApp groups. You guys can, you guys can make your little um, Microsoft team meetings. You can do all of that. So I'm telling you that um, group work and friendships are one of the keystones in, in completing this degree and completing this degree properly. Because without, my, without, my, without the members of my team, I could not, I could not have, I could, I don't think, I would have achieved as much as I did because they pushed me and they, they did a lot. We did a lot for each other but because I had, I can, I can tell you everyone that was on my team. Um, I had Renee Gray Harriet, I had Victor Barracks, I had Janelle Johnson, I had, um, I had Kamiya Ritchie and last but not least, I had Keisha Chance. But sad moment um, in, um, in mentioning Keisha Chance, um, during our second year, unfortunately, Keisha passed. And Ke when Keisha passed, um, her funeral was the same day <laughs> when we had um, our final exams. So we did, I did, well, we did an exam in the morning. We left the exam. I, we went, we took um, Keisha's body, body into the, 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 the church, we paid our respects, and we went back to the exam. So. This is one of the things to say, it doesn't matter, things will happen and things will throw you off, but you have to keep focused and know that this is what you want and you have to accomplish it regardless of what happens. So I, and the group, the friendships, I can't stress enough on the friendships. I really need you guys to pay attention to the persons in class, listen to each other. Don't try to suppress um, each other's opinion because all opinions count. That's how we learn because we're never too old to learn. And over time, over time, we have to understand that we learn from each other. We always learn from each other. We learn each and every day because, and the, 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 the friends we, 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 we find ourselves with, they put us in positions to learn and learn so drastically because I recall one, one specific incident in school. It was during the third year. And I will never forget that time. I had a really horrible week at work. I did not remember. Well, I remember that we had a midterm this Saturday, but I did not have enough time to prepare. It was 20 multiple choice questions. My team gathered around me. It was the lunchtime. They gave me an hour because we all learn in different ways. So, they were there, they were studying, they were throwing things out. We're all, I, I, that was one of the greatest things for me. I went into the, I went into the, I went into that, I went into that midterm. I came out with 19 out of 20. They weren't so happy with me because, <laughs> they weren't so happy with me because of that, but that's what I'm saying. Sometimes the smallest things are the greatest achievements. So it was a small speck of friendship and believing in me and helping me allowed me to be able to, um, to do that. And I can't, and I can't not mention our outstanding lecturers because one of the greatest thing with our lecturers, most of them are pretty down to earth. They're realistic. They give you views of different perspectives. There's, they're very innovative. They're quite creative and they help you along the way. They really help you along the way they allow you, they put things in a perspective. You're, you can speak to them. You can send a lecture an email. You can give some of them a call. And just to, uh, just for, just to understand the slightest thing, they're not so hard and fast. Um, I'd like to um, highlight a few of them. I hope you guys have the, the pleasure and privilege 
of having them during your tenure at the university. Um, we have um, Mr. Carvel McCleary. He taught me business negotiations. And trust me, when I tell you that Mr. McCleary is, is, is one of the most genuine and down to earth persons, you best believe me because he, he brought a different vibe into the classroom. He brought things down to ground level. He allowed you to understand things from, from the smallest perspective to the corporate level. That's how, that's how he allowed us to understand um, things. So after Mr. McClary is finished with you, I really hope you get the chance to, 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 to have him. After he's finished with you, there's nothing you can negotiate your way to, but you find yourself negotiating everything. You'll be going to the supermarket and negotiating with the cashier, and you know they have no, <laughs> they have no say in regards to that. And let me tell you, um, Miss Aldit Hilton, Maybe you guys are starting now, you guys are in first year. You, you will hear a lot of persons complaining about business and company law. I'll tell you from the get-go, you don't get caught up in the noise. Don't get caught up in the noise about the lectures and the courses. Or, and the, because there are, sometimes if you follow that, you put yourself in a spiral and you go in there with a block, per, um, block, block mindset and that will mess up your whole algorithm because a lot of persons complain about business law because it's a core. Some so it's, it's, it's business and company law is a core for. Um, so I don't. I'm not sure what you guys are. Um, what um, discipline guys are doing? But it was a core for me. Business law was a core for me for management studies. And the only problem I have um, with Miss Hilton is um, information overload, and that is not really a problem because she gives you so much information. I could not understand the, the difficulties or the problems persons um, were saying they had with the class. So this is one of my reasons to say to you, don't give in to the hype or the noise you hear because business law was a core for me and I did that in third year. I did really well in Ms. Hilton's class. I decided to do company law the other semester. I did it by choice and persons were, were, were trying to get around not doing it. So just saying that to say, and I am, I am not an academic. <laughs> I, 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 that, that's not me, but she provides you with the information. She provides you with all the information. All you have to do is read and pay attention. Then we have Mrs. Garcia McLennan. Mrs. Garcia McLennan was one of the lecturers that made me have to stay in class. <laughs> because she was so interactive, like in order, to, in order to learn and get the right perspective, everything was done interactively. So we did everything in group. She taught me team building and management, and she also taught me business strategy and policy. So she brings a different part into the, into the, into the, into the, into the classroom because her personality, she has one of those personalities, she keeps you interested. She allows you to, she allows you to understand on, I, I, I can't even, <laughs> I'm not even sure how to, how to describe how she does her thing in the classroom, but she does it really well. We have Ms. Yolande Hilton. She taught me organization theory and design. Let me tell you about Ms. Hilton now, Ms. Yolande Hilton. Her, her thing is that we had to do presentations every week. So you can't miss class. So every week you had a presentation to prepare for. So just like what I made mention earlier, sometimes you have to give up your Fridays, your Saturdays, your Sundays, and a couple of days in the week. We had to do that with Miss 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 Miss, Miss Hilton. But that was one of the good things that I lead back to lead back to me mentioning the team that I, we had, because we had um, the team that we had. We had study sessions. We tried to have study sessions at least two times out of the week, as best as we could. Not everybody could make it, but just before now, just before COVID, we were using Zoom because we realized that we had to work together. So you guys have it to your advantage now. Nonetheless, you don't even have to leave home where you can study and, and do your thing together. So Ms. Hilton had us doing presentation each and every week. We could, I, me, I personally could not understand why, but Best believe that by the nearing the end of the semester, I was definitely sure why. Because 
whilst preparing for my final exam, there was not much, there was not much preparation I think I needed because I had prepared so much presentations. It allowed, I was preparing for my final exam. So let's just say, sometimes our lectures have a method to their madness and it works out really well. <laughs> and Miss V, Miss Valerie Vieira, Miss V is a gem. <laughs> Ms. V is a gem. She, she brings innovation into the classroom. She gives you industry giants. She allows, she allows you to get things from the right perspective of entrepreneurship. She is the CEO of JBDC, Jamaica Business Development Corporation. And she will, I also had the honor of having her as my introduction to entrepreneurship lecturer and my creativity and, and, and innovation lecture. So just by say stating her position, you know the type of hands-on experience you get and the hands-on knowledge you get. So I need not say more in regard to that. And whilst I made mention of our lecturers, I also have to make mention of our, our administration staff, um, Ms. Keon Henry and Ms. Creary. You guys were a gem during my senior at the university because there's nothing too small or nothing too big that they can't help you with because they are the they are they are the keystone to you completing your degree any issue that you have any questions that you have they're a phone call away they're an email away and they respond so promptly so we really have to appreciate them and without them because you guys make sure you have their email addresses, their numbers, everything, so you can make contact with them. Any issues you have, they are the persons to speak to. They are the keystone in, our, in all administration needs. And in completing, well, in completing what I have to say to you guys, I really just want to say it's, it was a pleasure speaking to you. I say once more, congratulations for you guys making this choice. Whatever the reason was, whatever the options are, just continue. What you don't want to do, when you start, try your best not to stop. Even if you have to do one course per semester, try your best not to stop. You just remain focused. It's going to get hard sometimes. It's going to get tedious. You're going to tell yourself that you need to just take a semester off. You just need to take a break, but that's how it starts and that's how you mess things up. So try not to do that. I want you guys to be the odds. I want you guys to be the odds and remain humble, just like how the um, um, Professor Tenner mentioned earlier. Be the odds and remain humble. Of all your integrity, that is the keystone of, our, of us. Our integrity is the keystone of us. So we have to keep that in, we have to keep that, we have to keep that fully intact. So be the odds and remain humble as, as resonated with me for as long as I can remember. It has served as my personal motto. And that is one of the things I have to say to you guys today. Just be the odds and remain humble. Focus on what you have to do. Bear in mind why you came here, why you're doing what you're doing and stay focused. I thank you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful time at school. Trust me, you will have fun but you have some hard times as well. You laugh, you'll cry, but you'll get over it. Because like I said, I had no intention of coming to uh, going to the university to get a first class honors. All I wanted was to just get my degree and know that's it. But I thank you guys. And I hope you guys, congratulations once more. Congratulations guys for taking this step. And I hope you have a wonderful time. Mr. Shea, congratulations to you too. It's unbelievable that you describe yourself as an introvert, but it's also not that surprising because some of the greatest leaders I know are self-professed into introverts, perhaps including one of our earlier speakers today. But thank you so much for sharing with us, Mr. Shea. It's important. And like what you said, do not get caught up in the noise. And you spoke about all the sacrifices that you had to make and they paid off first class honors, meeting, making the Dean's list. So 
identify your dream, work hard, and the results will pay off. And with integrity, I acknowledge what you said about group work being a, an irritant, but what are the payoffs? You gained friendships and the depth of friendships that you gained along the way are very evident in what you said in that you could build together and work together and pick each other up along the difficult times. Thank you so much, uh, Kensley. I do believe you should be a motivational speaker despite your self-professed introvert status. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. Thank you for acknowledging our admin support team and thank you for acknowledging our academic staff who are all human beings, as you say, down to earth. And with that, I acknowledge and welcome Miss Yolande Hilton of who you spoke about as well. Thank you so much. As we move along the program, I would like to welcome next Dr. Heather Ricketts. And as Kensley said, you know, some of your lecturers are down to earth. Dr. Ricketts is our deputy dean, but she is also an academic. Although she says her role is not simply academics, but also helping students achieve their potential, but without ethical, procedural, or legal breaches. So students, you've been hearing every single one of us say that since this morning, Professor Tennant, Kensley has also said it. I have also said so integrity is important. So now I welcome Dr. Ricketts, our Deputy Dean, to share with you about our academic programs and guidelines. Over to you. Good morning. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much, um, Lisa. And good morning to all. Good morning to you all new students. We are extremely happy that you could join us. And so, you know, and for also choosing the Faculty of Social Sciences weekend program. Let me say how um, much I enjoyed Kensley's presentation. Kensley, we have a lot of graduate programs waiting for you. I saw Ms. Pinnock, our senior administrator say so in the chat. And we hope that you will go on to graduate work. And as Dr. Vassiani said, that um, perhaps you should take up a little bit of, um, of, of motivational speaking. So welcome. Let me welcome everyone. And, um, and thank you again for being here. Are you seeing my full screen? OK. So yes. Go, OK, so you're seeing my full screen. Uh, you would see the tiger, the tiger mascot at the bottom, welcoming you to the Faculty of Social Sciences. It's a mascot which we have just launched and embraced. And the mascot represents for us as the faculty strength and courage, determination, diligence, dignity, and independence. And these are some values which we have inculcated as a Faculty of Social Sciences for the last about over 60 years. In fact, last year, we celebrated our 60th teaching year as a faculty. So with the strength of the tiger, we hope that we can move forward and move the faculty forward. All of us, students, lecturers, administrators, support staff, that we'd move the faculty forward for at least another 60 years, but we certainly want it to go way beyond. Professor Tennant indicated to you that we embarked on a rich vision. We did a, a vision in exercise about three, three and a half years ago, and we have embraced this vision, which is to realize impact through research. As you know, UWI distinguishes itself from other, um, other tertiary institutions by the quality and the amount of research that we do. So we want to realize impact, I would say greater impact through research. We want to exceed your expectations, not just yours, but all the other stakeholders who we come into contact with and have to serve. We 
we pledge to actively advocate for sustainable, inclusive development, committed to being caring professionals. Kensley in his, in his talk spoke how, care, you know, how much care the administrators of the weekend program demonstrated, and also the lecturers who helped to ensure that everyone did very well. And we hope as well to harness our skills through continuous improvement. So we are on a journey to continuously improve. So here is my presentation. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the faculty structure, the programs, the categories, part-time versus full-time students, how we um, structure our lectures, they give you a sense of how you are to understand the codes, the course codes, tell you about the foundation courses and the importance, the course load and degree structure, the examinations and assessments or regulations around degrees, um, the opportunities you have as students, important things for you to note and important departments you will have to more than likely come into contact with and then contact details for our faculty. So here is our, um, I want to start by saying to all of you that your undergraduate student handbook is going to be the Bible. These days we haven't printed the handbook. So the copies I have here in my photograph are the 2017-18 and the 18-19 handbook. But the handbook for your year, 2021-22, is available online. We have a brand new FSS, Faculty of Social Sciences website, and it's very easy for you to navigate. You go into resources, into students, you will see the handbook, and your handbook is the handbook 2021-2022. So how are we organized in terms of the Faculty of Social Sciences? You met the Dean, so Professor Tennant is the current Dean. He serves for four years, and this is his last of his first four year um, tenure. Then there is a deputy dean. This is my second year serving as deputy dean. And we have three associate deans, one of whom is here and who has been chairing the program so far, uh, Dr. Vassiani, and in charge of partnerships and resource mobilization. But there are two other associate deans, um, Dr. James Bateman for undergraduate studies and student experience, and Dr. Delroy Shevers for graduate studies and research. Then there are heads of departments. There are six heads, and I'll talk to you a little bit about them in the next slide. The academic staff, of course, the administrative and technical staff, and then the service staff. So these are our departments, um, and we have one campus that we are affiliated with. In um, uh, affiliated to the Mona campus, which is our Western Jamaica campus. So the economics department is headed by Dr. Nadine McLeod Rose, Department of Government by Dr. Suzette Horton, the Mona School of Business and Management. Uh, the director is Dr. David McBean. The Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work is headed by Dr. Orville Taylor. And then we have a graduate uh, Institute, Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Research, and that is headed by Professor Aldry Henry Lee, and also associated with us is the Center for Disability Studies, and that's headed by Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, who I imagine all of you know or should know, and as I mentioned, the Western Jamaica campus, its um, principal is Dr. Patrick Prendergast. So, categories of students. So you have just joined us. So you are an undergraduate student. Uh, so undergraduate students can be full-time, they can be part-time, or they can be specially admitted. You really are part-time because of the nature of the weekend program. You do three courses per semester and your study is on a Saturday, um, really on a Saturday. But for full-time students, they carry a course load of five courses per semester. And for specially admitted students, they can't do more than about 12 credits, which would be four courses in an entire academic year. So they are more occasional students and they are not really in a degree program. We see specially admitted students every year, students who want to beef up, let us say their research skills, 
or want to get better at statistics. And they come to us as specially admitted and they take a course or two over the academic year. And this is something you can think of even as you complete your degree. In terms of lectures and tutorials, so the academic year is comprised or consists of two semesters of 13 weeks each, plus a summer school that is optional. So for regular full-time students, many of them uh, do courses to try and accelerate their progress by taking courses in our summer school. For you as weekend, you go into the summer um, with, your, with your programs and your programs are taught for about two and a half hours per course per week. Whereas in the regular uh, programs, there's, uh, their programs are three hours per course per week, which would be two hours of lecture and one hour of tutorial. So, course codes and levels. Well, for you as weekend um, program students, you are very fortunate to have administrators who work very, very closely with you. And because you're, you are much smaller in size, you get a lot of first, I would say direct first-hand assistance in understanding how to navigate the entire um, process of registering, et cetera. So, for you just starting, you will need to take first level courses. And some of those are things like economics, econ 1005. So always pay attention to the numeral, that digit that starts the code. 1005 suggests that it's a level one. Government 1000, level one. Accounting 1005, level one. Second level, 2000, 2026. 2004, as you would see. Third level, it starts with three, Econ 3000, Government 3016. So these are the, now your second and third level courses are what we call upper level courses. And those grades there count towards your degree GPA. All the levels count to your cumulative GPA, but the second and third level really define your class of degree. So whether you will end up with first class as Kensley did, or an upper second or a lower second or a past degree as the case might be. So your course credits are mostly three. Most courses, if not almost all courses in the Faculty of Social Sciences are worth three credits. We do have some six credit courses and they are likely to be more at the upper end, perhaps in your final year. Uh, nomenclature, which you should uh, be very uh, cognizant of and should know are things like prerequisites. What's a prerequisite? Well, it's a qualifying course. So you're trying to get into an upper level course, for example, like a, let's say you're trying to do, and I'm just put, picking you know, things hypothetically. Let's say you're, tra you're trying to get into Econ 2000. Well, it is likely that you will need Econ 1000. So Econ 1000 would be the prerequisite then for Econ 2000. And remember, I'm speaking hypothetically here. Then there is the other term, anti-requisite. And I want you to pay special attention to this. Anti-requisites are courses whose content overlaps. So if you look in your student handbook, there is a detailed list of these anti-requisites. So SOCI 1005 and Econ 1005 are considered anti-requisites. MGMT 2020 and Econ 2000 are also considered anti-requisites. Colleagues, for most of you, students, for most of you who are doing courses in, in the Department of Economics and in the Mona School of Business and Management, I can almost bet that you will be required to do Econ 1005 as your introduction to statistics course. Do not go and take SOCI 1005. It is likely to cost you. For those of you who are doing programs outside of economics and outside of MSBM, you then can take SOCI 1005. But pay attention, special attention to your handbook. Then of course, there are core courses. If you are doing a major, 
or a minor, your handbook would tell you, these are the courses you must do. So the must do courses are what we call the core courses. And then the free electives are the courses that you have the choice to pick. So you could do them. You might have an interest, let us say in Spanish. So you go over, look over in the Faculty of Humanities and Education and see what they have on offer. And you can end up perhaps declaring a minor in something like Spanish, or you look, maybe you're, you're good at something, mathematics, for example, you might want to do a minor in math. You can look at what is on offer in the Faculty of Science and Technology in the Mathematics Department. So free electives are courses which you're free to choose. You might have an interest and you have the prerequisite if the course requires a pre courses require prerequisites. Another term to be familiar with is exemption without credit. Very critical. Many times at the level one, you have done well at CAPE and you are getting, you are applying for exemptions from certain first level courses, first year courses. You are likely to get the exemption, but without credit, which means that you have to go look now to replace that course with another course at the same level or above. Well, generally at the same level. Then there are exemptions with credit that can be given, where you're given the course. So you say, oh, I did that, you know, I was elsewhere and I did this course. We look at the, um, the content of the course, we determine that it's yes, it can be given an exemption. And we say, okay, with credit, meaning that you don't have to go look for another course to replace it with. And then there are core curricular courses and only one such course is allowed per student. In your, in your handbook, there is a list of the co-curricular courses. So people do things like cricket or netball and athletics and so on as co-curricular courses. So I talked about exemption without credit and that's done for CAPE subjects. The eligibility, you must as a student have a grade one to a grade four at CAPE. And there is a list of courses outlined again in the student handbook available on the website that um, indicates the courses and the exemptions that you will get. And remember that these exemptions are without credit, meaning you have to look for another first level course to replace that course. So let's take accounting. So you did at CAPE accounting unit one, and you got either anywhere between a grade one and a grade four, then you are exempt from taking accounting 1005. If you did accounting unit two, and you got a grade one to four, then you are exempted from doing accounting 1003. That's how it works. We spoke a little bit about foundation, or I mentioned, I should say, foundation courses. Critical in the Faculty of Social Sciences, in fact, across the university, every student must do three foundation courses. For us in the Faculty of Social Sciences, the first is an English course, Fong 1013 or Fong 1019. Let me alert you that there has been a very recent decision by the Board for Undergraduate Studies that every first year student must take and complete the foundation course in their year one, in their first year, the foundation English course. So you either do FOM 1013 or FOM 1019. So FOM 1013, which is critical reading and writing in the social sciences, the prerequisite is that you must have a grade one at CSEC English A, or a grade one or a grade two at Cape Communication Studies, or you got a grade one at the English Language Proficiency Test. That's what the ELPT means, English Language Proficiency Test, which means you passed it. If that is true of you, you register for FOM 1013. It's done in one semester. If, however, you have not been, you, you don't have this profile, um, as FOM 1013, then you have to do FOM 1019, and it is critical reading and writing in the disciplines. Six credits, and it's done over, over, the, um, over two semesters, 
without the prerequisite for foundation 1013 and you have like a grade two, which would be you didn't pass the English language proficiency test. As I said, you must pass it in year one. So um, let me just say that there is a little challenge with this because there are some students who unfortunately didn't get an opportunity to take the English language proficiency test, which was offered a couple of weeks ago. And the next offering of this is in December. So for the people who will need Fong 1019, uh, the university, until other arrangements are in place, the university will have to accept that some persons will go into their second year um, not having yet completed Fong 1019. And so they will have to allow students to go forward. Um, there are a lot of things being ne negotiated as we speak, and so we will await the decisions and we will update you on what has been uh, agreed. Okay, so the foundation courses, so Fong 1013 or Fong 1019, which is the English language test, uh, sorry, course. The other foundation courses are Fong 1101, Caribbean Civilization, and Fong 1201, Science, Medicine, and Technology in Society. This particular course, Fong 1201, we prefer that it's done in semester one, the first semester. Now, there will be another foundation course you will see, Fong 1301, 1301, Law, Governance, Economy, and Society. This course is not to be done by students in the Faculty of Social Sciences. Social work students, however, can take this course. Everybody else in the FSS must not do this course. Other faculties do this course from 1301. Why? Because in our, generally in the social sciences, all of you get introduced to some aspects of law, governance, economy, and society. But for social work students, because of the specialized nature of their program, they don't get a chance to take courses which will allow them to build up some kind of competence in some of these areas. And this is why they have to take FOM 1301. Now for FOM 1101 and for FOM 1201, you can replace one of them with a foreign language at, a, at the level of your competence. So it is possible that you can take, for example, an, a level one Spanish or French or Japanese or Chinese course in place of Fong 1101 or Fong 1201. Now we come to talk a little bit about assessments and examinations. Um, there are many. Everything this semester is going to be online. And so you're going to have mid semesters done online, in coursework online, coursework you have to submit online. There are oral exams for students who have, who are in their final year. I'll talk a little bit about this um, shortly. Supplemental exams like the oral, there are examinations only that persons can apply for. And of course you have the final examination, which tends to be worth most of the marks. Um, some, in some cases, 100% of the marks. And for students who haven't passed um, the course at the end of the, 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 the final exam, they can apply for a go through. Or you can apply for a remark if you think that um, you, know, you, are, you have to pass the course and you thought that you would have done better and so on. There are time limits for the application to the examination section. So please bear that in mind. You can't just decide that, oh, you know, I should apply for a go through six weeks after you got the, the, the exam results. It doesn't work like that. So please pay attention to the time limits. Then persons can defer the sitting of an exam. In the case of illness or, or death or national duty, um, you know, if it's illness and death and so, you have to go through the health center. So you must um, provide a medical certificate, which has to be verified by our health center um, doctors if you have not, if you did not go to the health center first of all. And if they, in, in the case of a death of a member, you know, close member of family, then you have to submit a 
death certificate. For exams only, please consult the handbook again. The persons who are eligible are persons who have F1 failures for one or two of their final courses required to complete their degree. So let's say you're at the end of your degree, you have 18 upper level courses, you failed the last two of your upper level courses with a grade between 45 and 49. In that case, you will qualify for an exams um, only. Okay, um, you can qualify for exams only, or if you have a medical excuse that has been certified. For oral exams as well, same thing. Degree structure. So I, we, we talked a little bit about um, us having three credit courses for the most part. Here is the degree structure, and this is the area that gives me as a deputy dean one of the most um, difficult, um, I would say, experiences. Sometimes I'm really, I wanna cry for students. A student thinks that he or she has completed the degree and they write me to say, um, Dr. Ricketts, I did all the requirements for the degree and my degree has not been awarded. What has happened? And then I go and check and I discover that the student did 19 upper level courses and may have done like 11 or 12 level one courses. And the student says, but I have 90 credits, or I have 96 credits, or I have 93 credits. Why am I not um, finished? And then I have to be the bearer of bad news to say, look, the distribution of the credits is very, very critical. So students, pay, pay attention here now. So you'd have three foundation courses. Three threes, three foundation courses, three credits, that's nine. Three threes are nine. Yes, or if you do Form 1019, because it's a six credit course, you will come away with 12 credits for those three courses. But your level one courses have to be 10 courses in all, a minimum of 30 credits. If you do Form 1019, you would have 33 credits. Still 10 courses, but you will have 33 credits because Form 1019, is a, um, is, a, is a six credit course. The upper level courses, which are levels two and three, are 60 credits, a minimum of 60 credits you must have, 20 courses. So I'm going to ask you all the time to pay attention to the distribution of your credits. You must have a minimum of 30 at level one, 33 if you do Form 1019, and you must have a minimum of 60 at levels two and three, which would be equivalent to 20 upper level courses, okay? Now, um, any of you who will do things like international relations um, and so on, you are likely to have to do um, a Spanish because your level of, of competence in the, a foreign language is not, you know, so, so uh, it's basic, you may have to do what would be a level zero language course. Level zero courses are not counted among the 90 credits. So please remember that. Level zero courses are not counted in the 90 credits. If you're doing a major and all of you are doing majors, remember that majors equate to 10 core courses and minors equate to five core courses. This is a marking scheme. So an A gives you a 4.3 quality point. It ranges between 90 to 100, and it goes all the way down to F3. And F3 fail, you don't get any quality points. So even though you fail a course at F2 or at F1, notice that you will still get quality points, which will add up and help your GPA. But we don't want anybody getting the failures. So please ensure that you perform, you try your best and perform as well as possible. So based on the grades that you will get, it will dictate the kind of degree that you will be awarded. First class honors, G a GPA of at least 3.6. Second class honors has two divisions, an upper division, you have a GPA of 3.0 to 3.59. 
lower division, 2.5, 2.99, and then the pass is between 2 and 2.49. Any degree where the GPA falls below 2 cannot be, be defined by us, the faculty, and the determination has to be made by the board for undergraduate studies. So myself acting as the chair of the examinations committee for the faculty of social sciences, I have to write to the board making a case and providing the, the whole outline of everybody who we have to take forward, the entire academic record and asking BUS to tell us whether the student can be awarded a degree. And if they are awarded by BUS, it will be at the pass level. I, I spoke very, um, or highlighted leaves of absence, late withdrawals. Um, so some of you, for financial reasons, may have to take a leave of absence, compulsory leave of absence, or you might have to withdraw late. If you have sat an exam or you completed some coursework and you have for some reason to withdraw from the campus, this will be called a late withdrawal. So you have to apply online and let us know. Um, please note that for leaves of absence, um, we leaves of absence have a limit no more than two consecutive academic years or four semesters over the life of your program. So if, for example, you have to withdraw, take leave of absence, it can't be for more than two consecutive academic years. And there are deadlines for applications without penalty. Outside of the deadlines, of course, penalties would be applied. Some of you will more than likely add a course here or drop a course there. There is a period in which you can make that kind of adjustment to your registration. And it's usually available at the start of every semester, like the first three weeks. There are, however, deadlines for dropping courses. So please, again, look out for all emails regarding important dates. You, again, as I say, you are very fortunate to be a small group and you work very closely with the administrators. So more than likely, Ms. Henry or Ms. Um, Crary will you know, guide you. If you are withdrawing or um, de being deregistered, um, for those who are required to withdraw, uh, you, are, you will be required to withdraw if your GPA falls below 2.0 in consecutive semesters. So you are just starting. Let's say your first semester was rocky. Your GPA is below two, okay. We give you a little warning. You go into second semester and your GPA falls again below two. You will be required to withdraw. All right, um, and and so you will be notified by the university. You can appeal, and the appeals will be considered by the departments, and the outcomes will be communicated. Students are generally deregistered because of financial reasons. Um, so deregistration largely has to do with financial reasons. For those who voluntarily withdraw from the university, we ask that you make sure that you remove your courses. So please, if you are withdrawing, if you are engaging in voluntary withdrawal, please ensure that you remove your courses. And again, there are deadlines for, for when these things can be done, like leaves of absence and, and voluntary withdrawal. There is something called academic forgiveness. Um, the, who, the persons who are eligible are students who perform very poorly in a program. They're asked to withdraw or they voluntarily withdraw um, and they sit out for at least a year. They can apply, having returned, they can apply for academic forgiveness. If it is considered, then they have to begin with a new slate. I want to say to you, if you are out for five years or more, you may have to restart your program from the beginning. Some people I have noted uh, have been out from, let's say, 2008, 2009, 2010. They're trying to get back in, and they think that the courses will still be off, will still be, um, will still be okay. And we have to say to them, no, you have to do over this. You have to do over that and so on. Um, and beca because you would want to have your degree very current, there's currency to a degree. The integrity of the degree also has to be upheld. 
If you are transferring, going on an exchange or studying abroad, there are ways to do that. There are regulations, there are criteria for eligibility. Um, in terms of studying abroad, if you want to study abroad, you must be full time. You must have spent at least one year at Mona. Your GPA has to be at least three, and you must not have had any academic, you know, behavioral any um, behavioral um, issues with the university. Um, okay. And here are some resources for you. Um, Kensley, when he spoke, told you that he had joined the um, the dean's list. He knew that he was, um, you know, on the dean's list, having done very well. And I'm sure he became a member then of the Honor Society. So if you do very well, your cumulative GPA is above 3.6. You've passed Fung 1013 or 1019. You haven't failed more than one course. Then you can be a member of the Honor Society. And we are very proud that our Honor Society really offers a potential training ground for you students to, um, who exemplify our faculty's mission. And by the Honor Society, we really are encouraging scholarly, a scholarly culture. You must also participate in academic and co-curricular activities. I think the Dean mentioned this, that you must broaden your horizons, um, you know, ensure that your curiosity, um, Kens Kensley talked about staying focused and your engagement in some of these co-curricular activities would help. Um, and of course, if you do very well, you get onto the Dean's list, you enjoy faculty and department prizes and so forth. As I talk about co-curricular activities, there are many clubs and societies. Again, we have a long list in the, um, in the handbook and you can decide which one you would want to join. I'm coming to the end. So asking you to note a few things, your handbook, read it carefully. We have a brand new, beautiful website. I want you to browse it. Go look at everything that's available. Pay attention to the codes of conduct and responsibilities. They're in your handbook at the back. Know your regulation, manage your time, know your class times, seize the opportunities. We have a brand new comprehensive academic advising program. So seek academic advice from your program coordinators and whoever the advisors are for the various departments and programs. And I want to stress the academic integrity. Um, students, I sit on the examinations committee for the university. And over the last year, we saw over 150 students brought before us for irregularities, examination irregularities, collusion, plagiarism, blatant cheating, sharing and communicating with each other during the exam by WhatsApp, by text, by email, and also the purchasing of examination assistance. Be very careful. Many of these students are walking away now with the notation of EI on their transcript, which is examination irregularity. Think of a potential employer looking at your transcript. You think, okay, I've done well and I applied for this job. And the potential employer sees, the HR department sees EI and sees the notation examination irregularity. You know that your chances of getting the job would be over. Please. I am asking you to ensure that all of the work that you do is your own, your own. No plagiarism. If you are quoting from somebody else, you ensure that you quote correctly, appropriately, attributing the quotation to the person who made it, that you do not collude, that during the exam, you don't communicate or share material and that you don't go buying um, examination assistance. Students are purchasing degrees, purchasing grades, spending $20,000, $30,000, buying an A here, buying a B plus and so forth. And they were all found out. And they have to live now with the repercussions of this. 
So I told you about the academic advising. I'm sorry for this, um, this slide, which has the date August 30. Those would be for those who are, um, we are seeing on Monday, but you have attended your orientation session um, today, which is August 28th. I want to highlight for you though, begin with the end in mind. You know what you want to get at the end. So begin with that. You want to graduate with an honors degree. So begin with that in mind. Okay. Um, also, um, for noting credit checks, you want to do a credit check, the handbook and the website provide you with facilities for doing so. And I also want you to know the student services that are offered by us as the faculty office versus your department. And let me just leave with you the philosophy we have for teaching and learning as the Mona campus, Faculty of Social Sciences. We want you to be critical and creative thinkers, to have good interpersonal skills, to be innovative, to be globally aware and grounded in a regional identity. We are Caribbean people to be socially, culturally, and environmentally responsible. Very, very important, particularly environmentally responsible in the context of climate change, which is the biggest existential threat that we face as small island states. And we want you to be guided by strong ethical values. If you look around the Caribbean, the levels of corruption are staggering. Not just the Caribbean, other places, the US we, we've seen. We want you to be guided by strong ethical values. So here are important departments faculty, to help you as you navigate the faculty office. We are here for you. Admissions, you've already interacted with them, but some of you will interact with the registry information system. The library, you will have to interact with. The examination section, the Office of Student Financing, SAS, the Office of Student Services and Development, the International Student Office, for those of you thinking of going off, you know, um, on, on a semester overseas, the Office of Special Student Services, for any of you who may have a disability that you are aware of, you want to go to the Office of Special Student Services, register, let them know you. If there are any services that could be provided to help you to do well while you're here, please let them know. And of course, our health center, very important. Here is the information for our faculty office. And we are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And we also have a YouTube channel. So colleagues, students, um, best wishes for a very successful journey through the Faculty of Social Sciences. Great to see all of you. Thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of the day and have an excellent semester. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ricketts. I'm still here. And, you know, we will all be interacting. Dr. Ricketts has given us so much information and you will be interacting with your lecturers in a virtual space. So let's see how well you can maneuver some of the features in Zoom. Although you'll be using a different platform more than likely, I would like to see how good you are or how well you can learn to use these features. So can everyone try to find, click on the reaction feature, and congratulate yourself by selecting the ta-da icon. Okay, so I see Tashana, Celine, Felan, uh, Sean, Toy, everybody is, most persons are figuring it out. Congratulate yourselves for joining the Faculty of Social Sciences weekend program. About half of you have figured out how to use the congratulations feature. I'll just give you about 10 more seconds for others who may want to try to do so. Now, 
You see the big tiger behind me. And sometimes I get carried away with the, the virtual Zoom backgrounds. But Dr. Ricketts said, spoke about the FSS tiger. And she spoke about some of the attributes of the tiger and why we didn't just arbitrarily choose the tiger, but we consulted with the faculty members, with our entire community, with students. And this is what resonated most with us. Now, the first person who can raise their hand and correctly identify two attributes of our FSS Tiger will receive a prize from the faculty office. So I will ask Kayan, Anisha and Stephanie to help me monitor whose hand goes up first. Can you name two attributes of the FSS mascot, the tiger? Okay, I see C. Powell. Is that the first person with their hand up? Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, uh, two attributes, um, if I remember correctly, is um, strength. Yes. And I think there was one for integrity. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Right. So strength, I know there was strength. And... Uh, Oh, <laughs> what else do you think of when you think of the tiger? Um, determination. Okay, let's let's see. I'm going to ask Doctor Ricketts to answer. I see Jordan C with her hand up as well. What two do you think? Hi. Good morning. Uh, the it. It, I think it has four, where you ask for two. So it's strength and courage and another two. Okay. Okay. Well, both of you will get spot prizes. I hope Stephanie doesn't kill me for this. Um, it's Powell for trying and remembering integrity. I don't think integrity was one of the attributes of the tiger, but it's something we have been speaking about all morning. So you would have listed it. So we have prizes for both Jordan and Ms. Powell and Kensley has added independence. Now, thank you. I have one more question for you. Before you go on, Lisa, just to yeah. say Ms. Powell did say determination and it's one of the attributes. Okay, thanks. So thanks. that is true. So everybody is a winner. Uh, please, our faculty office will arrange with you for your prizes. So congratulations. Can we congratulate them, please, with... What's Jordan's full name, please? Jordan Coleman. Thank you, Jordan. Welcome. Congratulations. Now, one more question. I actually have 10 questions, but we'll just do two now. Um, I'm the first person to display a uh, let me see if I can find what I want first. Okay. The first person to type <laughs> I don't know if this will work, but let's see. Okay, one question is, on the scale of GPAs, where does an A start? On the scale, okay, so Ebony Gordon Sullivan's hand went up in a flash. Go ahead. I believe it's a 3.6 or 3.59. 
Okay, I, I mean a clear A, not an A minus. So is it no. 3.6 then? <clears throat> no. Um there's so many hands up. No. <laughs> um can anybody tell me whose hand went up next? Was it Abigail Smith whose hand was next? I think yes, I think so. Thank you, Stephanie. Abigail. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, um, the A would start at a 4.0 GPA. Yes, and 80%. Yes. Thank you very much. So Abigail no. Smith gets that correct. Thank you for trying. What is, what is her name, Abigail Smith? Abigail Smith, yes. Yeah, okay. Abigail. Okay. And the final question is, how many level one courses are you required? Okay, could everybody put their hands down, please? And now this one is for the first person who can type in the chat the number of courses you have to do in level one. The chat is disabled. Oh, the chat is disabled. Okay. Can we enable the chat? Okay. So, Carlington Miles, I think, was the first one on the draw. Yes, Carlington Miles answered correctly with 10. Uh, Shana Williams and Romario say three, but if you do three courses yeah. alone, that's just no. three foundational courses. Oh, oh for, Lisa, for Lisa, regular, okay. Lisa, for regular, what was the question? Was it for semester? Was it for year? I said per year. Okay. So for year, per year for a full-time student. And so that was Sorry, an unfair question. Correct, yes. That was an unfair question. So for a full-time student, it would be 10 courses. But for you in the weekend program, it would be six courses if we include no, semester eight. one and two. It eight. would be eight in all. And okay, so, so I, they wouldn't know that until Anisha gives her presentation. Okay, so I disqualify myself for that one. Bad question. Okay, if anyone, can anyone name give the name of any head of department in the Faculty of Social Sciences in the chat. Dr. Ricketts named some heads of departments in her speech. Ebony Garden, Ebony Garden is first. Okay, thank you very much. And Ebony Garden has correctly said, Dr. Orville Taylor, who is head of psychology, social work, and sociology, psychology. And sociology. Thank you, Dr. Ricketts. So Ebony Garden gets that prize. Now we move along with our program. As we you know, the recurrent thread this morning has been integrity and following the rules, yet persevering and doing well. And we will be sharing with you uh, a video with the Faculty of Social Sciences, Tiger, and with some of the rules for against cheating right before we have a presentation on the library. This is an anti-cheating campaign brought to you by the FSS. The University of the West Indies, this prestigious institution, is ranked number one in the Caribbean, in the top 2% in Latin America, and in the world's top 4%. The Faculty of Social Sciences is the largest of all seven faculties at the UWI Mona. The FSS is renowned for its rich history of 60 plus years of scholarship and eminent graduates 
including prime ministers, ministers of government, leaders within the public and private sectors, and Rhodes Scholars. We also boast Olympians, including recent gold medalist in the men's 110-meter hurdles, Hansel Parchment. As is synonymous with the symbolic meaning of the tiger, our FSS brand represents strength, courage, determination, dignity, and independence. And now you, budding social scientists, have been charged to add to this rich legacy. As future leaders, you will partake in the continuation of our FSS brand with integrity and pride. Go forward knowing that though you are one, you represent the entire FSS and UA. As the late Maya Angelou would say, I come as one, but stand as 10,000. Do not tarnish my name. We don't have tolerance for cheating. Listen up. The UWI's assessment regulations consider cheating to be one of the most egregious acts that a student can commit. Cheating is considered to be any attempt to benefit oneself or another by deceit or fraud. It threatens to devalue the status of one's degree and by extension, the status of the university. There can be no trust that a degree means what it is supposed to when a student has obtained it by fraudulent means. So, if you have any ideas about bringing unauthorized materials in the examination, copying from your notes during an examination even when the instructions warn against this, assisting other students to copy from you or use your papers, accepting assistance from any other students or using any other students' papers, paying persons to do an exam for you, taking writings or drawings or other work to your examination. These are all considered as attempts of cheating and the UWI has robust systems to detect such acts. If you are found cheating, then this will be reported in writing to the campus registrar and you will have to face the examination committee which hears cases of examination irregularities. You will face serious sanctions. Here are some of the consequences of cheating. When you cheat, you only cheat yourself of a learning opportunity. When you cheat, you risk failing the course and having a FEI failed examination irregularity notation on your transcript, being fined heavily, or even being suspended for a period or expelled. Cheating affects your conscience and your guilt causes more stress. The more you worry about getting caught for cheating, the more this anxiety affects your performance. Cheating results in you not respecting your money and your time. You only throw away your investment when you cheat. Cheating results in you ruining your integrity, who you are as a person, and this taints your image and any other accomplishments you might have had before cheating. Imagine a potential employer seeing FEI on your transcript, or a possible scholarship being missed because you are deemed to be dishonest and untrustworthy. Cheating does not allow you to see your true potential. It only destroys your self-esteem. Even though technology might make it easier for you to cheat, it makes it just as easy for us to discover when you cheat. Cheating does not pay. Make it your daily intention to pursue academic integrity. If something does not feel right, trust your instincts. Don't let anyone lead you down any path of destruction of your reputation. In the FSS, our focus is on honesty and excellence, not only in attaining your grades, but also in the type of social scientist that you become, and how you represent yourself and us in the classroom and beyond. We hope to inspire and foster in you standards of excellence 
so that you may develop and demonstrate a character that is in keeping with the expectations of the UWI graduate. Stand proudly, observe your actions and make sure that you always act with integrity, professionalism and excellence. This, this message, message is endorsed, endorsed by, by And we thank Mr. Bell and Mrs. Keisha Gail Williams for that very clear message. No, no, it's the thank you, Dr. Ricketts. It's not worth it. And you know, as someone who has had to report students myself, it's very painful, but it's also unfair for those students who have worked hard and followed the rules to sit by and um, have others manipulate the system. So now we have sharing with us about how to use the library during these times, Mrs. Audrey Sadlow from the Mona Library. Mrs. Sadlow, thank you so much for staying with us and sharing. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me on behalf of the library. I have a brief PowerPoint presentation, which I'm going to share with you. And what I'm going to do this morning is just to provide a brief overview of the Umona Library and the services which we offer in the online modality in which we operate. Now, um, on behalf of the library, I want to extend our congratulations to you and to welcome you to the university and the library. And we look forward to working with you in a partnership to ensure that you achieve your academic success. I know when most persons think of a library, they look at a physical building. But yes, we have five physical buildings, um, a main library, which most of you may be familiar with, but we also have the medical branch library the science and engineering branch library, there is a faculty of law library, and we are also located in Western Campus Jamaica. Now, in addition to our physical presence, we provide a wealth of online resources to meet the needs of our students, to ensure that you have at your fingertips the information that you will require for your program. You may need to visit us from time to time. So the Reprographic Services Unit, for example, is physical, physically located at the Mona Library. And that unit offers scanning, photocopying, printing, spiral binding, and laminating services. However, you can email us and we will provide the services as required. We have a West Indies and Special Collections unit where for the most part, those materials must be accessed in-house. So in the event that you would need to access those resources, if you send us an email, we will make special arrangements for you to access them. And I will speak in a little while on how you can access resources from our reading rooms or stacks, and those are our physical resources. Now, we have subscriptions to over 35 scholarly databases. We also have a wide range of electronic resources, such as ebooks, 
Some of our citation guides are online. And of course, examination past papers, which I'm sure is a point of interest. The databases that we subscribe to, they provide a comprehensive coverage of all areas in the social sciences. And in fact, they are our most popular databases. Articles can be downloaded or ebooks also can be downloaded um, and printed based on the restrictions of the particular vendors. Some, however, are read only. We have provided access to free ebooks. And um, a lot of these, however, are governed by either a single seat license or a multi seat license. But once you access a resource, the information is there to tell you is it in use? Should you come back later? Can you proceed, etc. This is one of the most popular database that we have, which is Credo. And just to add that the library teaches a component of the foundation 1019 course and 1013 critical reading and writing. And so we will introduce you to Credo. It is one of our most popular reference databases, which I'm sure you will all use and you will find very useful. Some of the databases which you will you're going to interact with are Academic Search Ultimate, Business Source Complete, Caribbean Search, Communication and Mass Media Complete, EconLit with Full Text, and Hospitality and Tourism Complete. As well, some of the databases that you're going to access are ProQuest, Emerald Insight, Regional Business News, JSTOR and Project Muse. These are the databases which speaks directly to the social sciences. Now, the question you're going to ask is, how do we access all of these resources? The resources are accessed electronically. You use your UWI ID as well as the same password that you use to enter SAS or ORVL. Now, we know that from time to time, students may have access um, issues with the library. And so we will ask that you either reach out to MITS to have your password reset or to reach out to the library. I'm going to link out to our website. And the website has a wealth of information about the lab resources, the services that we offer, etc. But I just want to highlight you a link, which is a portal to all of our information services. There is an Ask a Librarian tab, and it is on both sections of the portal. This service is available online from 9 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. in the evenings. And once you're searching, you have a problem, you need assistance to locate an article. You have located an article, you cannot download the full text, whatever it is, reach out to us, we will respond to you. If the service is offline, we will respond the next day. It also speaks to this various circulation services, research assistance that can be offered and it also speaks to guidelines for using digital content and it will provide you with any information that um, is available on current library events. Now if I go back to my PowerPoint, some of the services that we have to offer are information literacy, and information literacy is critical. In our information literacy um, programs, we guide students on how to use your link, how to locate information resources, how to evaluate these information resources to ensure that they are meeting your needs. We also 
will provide um, guidance on how to do your in-text citation. And you heard about cheating, you heard about plagiarism. And so ensuring that you understand the nuances of your in-text citation is critical. And what is even more critical is ensuring that your references are prepared in the correct format. We will guide you through the different citation styles. So you may be asked to use either the Chicago style manual or the APA. We will take you through it to ensure that you understand exactly what is required of you so that you can um, perform optimally. We also have um, what is called our hall, Halls of Residence Librarian programs, where we will work directly with our first year students who may be living on hall. There is a circulation services and interlibrary loan because we, we know that we may not have all the resources that you need. And so we will work with other libraries to get these resources and to make them available for you if they're not in our collection. We're going to be having a series of orientation programs and I will encourage you to come on board so that you are more aware of what is happening in the library and the how we can assist you. These are the two citation styles that I spoke about. The Chicago style manual is available online. APA is not available online at the moment. However, we know that the publishers, they have just opened up this um, facility. So we're hoping that in the near future, we will be able to make this um, manual also available online. Now, when we think of plagiarism, um, some of the areas that the library will guide you with is really to understand what plagiarism is and what are the pitfalls of plagiarism and how can you avoid plagiarizing. And so we're going to go right back to our in-text citations and right back to our references to ensure that um, we are not caught in the plagiarism chat. What are some of the services that we offer that may be of interest to you, especially as you may not be able to physically visit us? Based on the copyright legislations of the country, we have scanned and emailed chapters of books to faculty members so they can post on the student um, portal or directly to students. We also have all our seminars and workshops available online via Zoom. There's curbside pickup. So if you need to borrow a physical copy of a book, you can email us the title of the book, your name, your ID number, etc. Once we have checked the system, verified that yes, you are a current student, we will process the transaction and we will send you an email to say when you can collect the book and for where the book can be collected from. We also have a tablet and loan, um, tablet and laptop loan service where these devices are loaned to you for the semester. And so what we ask is that working through your lecturers and your program coordinator, they can send us an email, we will do the checks, we will process the loan, and we will, we will advise you when you can, can collect it. All our one day loans are now extended to three days so that you have a longer period in which to use the resource. We have some upcoming sessions on ULink. So these will begin on September the 6th through to September the 9th, where we will guide our students 
on how they can navigate through your link to access all the electronic resources and to fully access a full text of these resources, whether it is an article or a book from the comfort of their homes, the comfort of their offices, etc. We will also be having a special session on plagiarism 101. And this will be held on September the 7th. We are mindful that you may be working and these times may not be um, convenient for you. We are willing to work with you in the evenings at 6 p.m. if necessary to have special sessions so that you can benefit from all of the information that we can provide you to make your experience in, in using the resources of the library. So um, you can let us know. We also have some special resources available. So on OU Verily, for example, we have a container which is called UWI ML1. You can self-enroll and it provides you with a suite of information resources that are specifically related to the library. So, um, your, your, and once you do the foundation course, you will also find video recordings in this container that will assist you. And then we also have an orientation lib guide which is available on our website. It provides a virtual tour of the library. It um, advises what your born privileges are, how you go about borrowing, as I said, finding eBooks, et cetera, finding articles, printing and photocopying, et cetera. Now we are available on the various social media platforms. And so I would encourage you to, to follow us so that you can see what are the upcoming activities that you can participate in. Uh, and once again, I just want to extend our thanks to you for allowing us to participate briefly in your orientation session and to let you know that we look forward to working with you. We look forward to supporting you and to providing you with the information resources that you will need as you complete your program. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sadlow. Uh, students, I know it's a lot of information this morning, but trust me when I say you should use the information use the library. The library is very effective. Recently, I almost as a, well, I wouldn't say as a joke, that I had two references that I could not find and I used the library chat and the librarian did not stop until she consulted with her team to find the material and to find an alternative source from the one I could not find. So please, there are all of these things in place to facilitate you and make your journey as a student easier. So thank you very much, Mrs. Sadlow. You are welcome. And just to add, someone had asked in the chat if they can borrow laptops. Yes, we have tablets and laptops available and they are available for the entire semester. Thank you very much for that. And now introduce you to Miss Anisha Crary, who will be taking you through the process of how to register, how to use RVLE, and understanding your timetable. Over to you, Anisha. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. 
All right, so first we're gonna go through the timetable. Uh, all right, so the first set of courses that we're gonna be looking at are your first level courses. For so everyone will be doing Econ 1000, that is the principles of economics one. There's Fountain 13, critical reading and writing in the social sciences. This is for students who have the one in CXC or CSEC English, a one or two in Cape Communication Studies, or a one in the ELPT. Don't, if you do not have the requisites for Fountain 13, you have the option of doing Psych 1000. This is Introduction to Psychology. For banking and finance students though, if you do not do the Fountain 13, you'll be doing Econ 1004. For the afternoon slot, you'll be doing Accounts 1005, which is financial accounting. This is for everyone. All right, so seeing that we're already, uh, we've gone through the timetable, we're now going to move on to registering for our courses. So I'm gonna take you now to the SAS portal, where we're gonna log on and register for the courses. All right, so once you go to the SAS portal, you're gonna get an information, they're gonna be an important notice that tells you that you're, you log on using your ID number and your date of birth. So you enter your ID number here, your password, then you log in. You're gonna get the university memo, then you agree, I agree, and continue. After which we go to student services, click on registration. We're gonna be looking, look, look up classes to add. Then we're gonna select the academic, academic year and semester, which is 2021-22, semester one. Then you submit. All right, so the first course that, um, Usually what happens, the courses are listed based on subject. The first course that we're doing would be Econ 1000. That would be from 8.30 a.m. to 11. So we're gonna type in ship econ. Then we're gonna find economics right here. Then click course search. Look for Econ 1000, which will be principles of e economics. Click view section. All right, it's very important to note, all weekend co school courses are listed on the, usually come up first on the system. The campus is WC, the day is Saturday, which is indicated by S, and the stream is always gonna be 11 lecture. So you're gonna click on the checkbox, checkbox is always empty. So if you don't say empty checkbox, you're gonna have a problem. So you can always reach out to myself or Kian Henry in that regard. So you're gonna click on the checkbox. Then you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and click register. All right, so a lot of persons would have gotten this error message. Six, for instance, your record is not showing a math course that you have a CSEC or a Kate math, right? So what you're gonna do if you get this error message, which is the prerequisite and test score error, you're gonna click request override, select the course from the dropdown, then you're gonna put in a reason. For instance, this is a level one core course for me to complete. Then you click submit. All right, so now we would have submitted the override for Econ 1000. We're gonna move on to registering for another course. Anisha, find out if they're understanding.
Is everyone with me? Are we understanding? I think you're going a bit fast. Okay. Hi, good morning. Sorry to look at you. Um, my net went out, so when I came back on, I only saw where you were selecting the courses. Um, is it a possibility for you to show me where you initially started? Sure. Right, let me just close this one. So we can go Yui, Mono, Sass. So you're going to look for the University of the West Indies Student Administration System. Then you click Enter Secure Area. Enter your ID number and your password. For all new students, your password will be your date of birth until you reach out to MIT to change your password. So once you, once you enter your ID number and your password, you click login. You read instruction, you click I agree and continue. Then we go to student services. Are we following? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, then we go to registration. You're gonna to move to lookup classes to add. You select the academic year and the semester. We're going into semester one, 2021-22. So we'll click, select that option, then we submit. All right, so seeing that we did econ already, I'm going to show everyone now how we do accounts 1005. So accounting is already on for the subject. So we're going to select course search. We're looking for 1005, so it's going to be right here. Then you click view sections. Weekend courses are normally listed first on the listing. This section is 11, campus is WC, and the days S for Saturday. All right, so you're gonna click on the select checkbox. And we scroll to the bottom of the page and click register. Again, we're gonna get a prerequisite and test score error. Once you do not have mathematics on your record, you're gonna get this error message. So we're going to do a request override. So you click request override. Select the course on the drop down. So you can put in your reason. All right. Then we submit. One second. Uh, can you hold on a second, please? Sure. I did remedial mathematics. So how would I attribute for that? Um, me doing uh, the remedial maths. I don't understand. You did the remedial math already? Mm hmm You got a grade? Yes. Okay. So now you would have you would have completed the mathematic requirement for the uni university. So you can proceed with registering the, for the courses without the need for a prerequisite and test score error. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so I just showed you how to register for Accounts 1005 and Econ 1000. Uh, let's go back to the timetable. So for persons who have the one in English or the one or two in K communication studies, you should be doing fountain 13. If you do not have the one in the fountain 13, um, if you do not have the prerequisite for fountain 13, I recommend that you do psych 1000 if you're not a banking and finance major. Let us go back to the timetable real quick. I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to the timetable.
All right, so normally when the timetable is being adjusted, right, we try to take into consideration the needs of everyone. So on this timetable, everyone has a course that they can do. So we ensure, even though the program is small, we try to cover for everyone. So if you can do a course, there's something else there for you to do. So if someone doesn't have the requirement for Fountain 13, they get the option to do Psych 1000. And if you're a banking and finance student, you do Econ 1004. You're required to do three courses for semester one. Semester two timetable will be sent out to you um, at a later date. And then in summer term, you do two courses. So for you, each academic year, you do a total of eight courses until you have completed. All right, so once you've registered for your courses, the last step now is to log on to the OURVLE platform. So we're gonna move on to the OURVLE platform now. So you can figure out how to see the courses that you've registered for, as well as to find your classroom. All right, so I'm gonna show you my OAVRLE. Unfortunately, these are not weekend courses. However, they're gonna show you how the platform will look when you log on as a student. So once you go to my courses, you're gonna see all the courses that you would have registered for in the weekend program, all right? So when you click on any course now, so I'm gonna click on this course. So we're gonna call this course Econ 1000 sake. Econ 1000 for reason's sake. This is not an undergrad course, but we're gonna call it Econ 1000. So when you click on the course, when you go on the platform, right? You click on your course, you're gonna get a notation that tells you where your classroom is. So for this course, it says lecture room. So when you click on the lecture room, right? It's gonna load a Blackboard collaborative room. All right, so when you go to this room, you're gonna get the option to click on the class. So you're gonna see a listing of all the classes. Let me just use the one that says lecture room here. So you're gonna click on lecture room. When you click on lecture room, you're gonna see the option to join this session. I'm not gonna join this session, but this is what you're gonna do when you're joining your classes. So I'm gonna go over this again from scratch. So we're gonna find the OEVRD room. Let me close this window. So you're gonna go UE, online system. We're gonna look for the option for student, for OURVLE. When you click on it, you're gonna go on and log on with your ID number, the same ID number that you use on SAS the same password. Then you go to My Courses. You're gonna see all the courses that you would have registered for. You click on the respective course that you're, so for students um, on Saturday, September 4th, right? Your first class will be Econ 1000. So to be on time for class, see at about 8.25, you go on OEVRLE, click on the class, which will look similar to this one. You're gonna look for the lecture room. And join the session. Any questions? I'm not seeing the lecture room loading for the um of the courses that we just registered for. Oh, they're not, they're gonna take up to 30 minutes. Give us about 30 minutes. You're not gonna get the lecture room though until September 4th. Okay, cool, thanks. So I'm just until giving you a run around. Saturday, until next week, Saturday when class starts, but she's just giving you a demonstration. 
Okay, great, thank you. Any other question? I think we have questions in the chat, hold on. I, I've been addressing them. Um, okay. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, what if it's the case where you have not yet received the CAPE results, but you have the you have the CXC grade mm -hmm. one or two, but you have not yet received the CAPE results to know what your grade is okay. for the continue. Okay. Usually what happens for the weekend programs, seeing that we are part time. Having the CAPE or not having the CAPE does not deter you receiving an offer. So once you have the five CXE subjects, one to three, or better one to four, then admissions can process an offer for you. So is it that you, did you receive an offer? Yes, I did. Okay. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying based on Fountain 13, mm -hmm. seeing that I have not yet received the CAPE results and awaiting. So you if it's have a the case option. where, go ahead. If it's a case where seeing that I don't have it at this present moment, if I should do Psych one thousand. All right. What's your major? Um. Well, right now it's management studies. Okay. So you do the Psych one thousand, and if you have, onto their K results are posted. Mm hmm. And okay. afterwards, you can determine when you do the um, the form ten thirty, okay. because you may if you did not if you were not successful in the CAPE, which we're hoping you were, then mm -hmm. you would have to do the ELPT. Okay. Also, we offer the form ten thirteen in the summer as well. So for people who are not qualified to do it now, for this semester. After you do your ELPT in December and pass it with a one, you will get to do the Fountain 13 in the summer. Did everybody hear that? Yes, but I have a question. Um, <clears throat> the explanation is a little confusing because I, what I heard her say is that she got a grade one in the CSEC. So if you got grade one in C6, wouldn't that qualify you to do the foundation 1013? Yeah, okay. but I didn't get I didn't get a one, I got a two. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. only if you got a one. So or if, if you got, got a one in CXC. Yeah. So if you got a one, you're fine. The K grade doesn't matter then. Yeah, no, I, you will get to do the fountain 13. No, but if you get it like how she sat her cape and is awaiting the results. If she got, if she's to get a one or a two in cape, um, communication studies, then she would also go straight into doing the 1013 in the summer. Okay, thank you. I, I have a question. This is a good time or should I? Yes, Anisha? go ahead. Uh, thank you, Anisha, for the presentation. No, no. Anisha, are you finished? Yes, I am. Um, is everybody clear on how they are to register and what they are to register for? Yes. yes. But just know I was trying to register for the Psych 1000 and it's saying campus. All right. We are having a problem with Psych 1000 right now. We have written to um, the, the specific department for them to sort it out for us. Okay, so we're hoping that by um, Wednesday it will be sorted out. So everybody who is trying and having a problem, it is coming from this side. It is not your side. Okay, miss. It's, it's a system problem. Okay, uh, so thanks for the presentation, Ms. Curry. Uh, Mrs. Gordon Sullivan, is that your previous hand or do you have another question? Because this takes us uh, Ms. Henry has been moderating the chat for questions, but this takes us officially into our 
question and answer segment, but I have one more question for you. Uh, and the first person who can type the correct answer in the chat to the question, what are the two responses you could have or what are the two avenues you have if you are dissatisfied with your final examination grade? What two things may you request? Okay, so Ebony Gordon Sullivan uh, got that, a remark or a go through. Ms. Powell also got it as did Abigail Smith. Great forgiveness and remark. So the two official answers I know of are the remark or go through. Okay, so we are officially in the Q&A section, which um, Dr. Ricketts, you want to comment on that? The answer I have is go through or remark. Yes, and I was saying true, that's correct. There's nothing called grade forgiveness. No grade okay. forgiveness, yes. Okay, yeah. thank, thanks for clarifying. Okay, so you have already been asking questions, but please go ahead either by typing in the chat or raising your hand. If you oh, have okay. Lisa, I'm seeing a question from Maurice Lowen. I think he meant what will happen if all does not go well online on the online platform for registration? Is that what you're asking, Maurice? Okay, he also has a previous question about um. Oh a financial strain and where should he go to communicate this? Okay, so for the financial issues, you are going to go to um, the bursary department. They, they have a system where you can set up a, what's the name of it please, Heather? A system where you payment pay, plan. a payment, payment plan. plan yes. So you can go, um, to bursary and ask how you could set up, make an arrangement to set up a payment plan to pay your school fee. Yes. And the payment plan has to be adhered to, otherwise examination um, sitting will be prevented. So. How to request the payment plan now that we're operating in an online environment? I do. Unfortunately, I can't answer that question. Well, I think they could find some information on the on, on the boss on yes. the UUE website on the boss. Yes. I First would... online services. Yes. 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 On the boss. And just kind of look until you see something. Uh, I'm encouraging students to look, um, to pay some attention to the new UE website, to navigate it, and then scroll down and click onto the new Faculty of Social Sciences website. Those are the two websites. They have become very interactive now for you to pay some attention to, as now we're operating in a full online. Era. All right, is there a late penalty for the commitment fee? I don't think they will let you, you won't be able to register if you don't pay the commitment fee. I don't think, no, the commitment fee is the same money that we use for your miscellaneous. Right. So it is your tuition basically. It's part of your tuition. So I don't think there's a penalty, but yes, there is a penalty. The more late you are with your school fee, there is a 1% interest every month added. 
And after a certain time in the semester, we're going to cut students off and you won't be able to register anymore if you have not paid at least your miscellaneous fees. And after a certain time, if you have not paid your school fees, you will be locked out of the system. So because we're not, we're not operating in a physical space anymore, students can't come to class and sit down anymore and still literally do the course. You have to pay your school fees to be let into class on the online platform. Okay, there's a question about the ELPT date and how to select Psych 1000. All right, so as I said before, Psych 1000, there is a problem with it from the people who need to put it up correctly on the system, and we have written to them about that. So we are hoping it will be sorted out by Wednesday. Um, about the ELPT, no, as um, Dr. Ricketts said in her presentation, I believe the next the next sitting of the ELPT test will be in December. And we will be sending out notices to you about the dates long before so that you can register and pay your money. And um, I don't know how many of you have taken it already, but it's kind of similar to the CXC English. So in preparation for it, you may be able to, English language, you may need to go over your English language, know how to write an essay, true or false, sorry, synonyms and antonyms, verb, noun agreements, those kind of things they look for in the ELPT test, very similar to the English language exam, um, CXC exam. Thank you, Kea. There's a question uh, whether the commitment fee can be paid online. Um, I have a child who is starting UA and I be, we did that. Yes, you can yes, go it to can be paid online and set up. You set up an account and your bank uh, verifies you. You have to get a verification after setting up the account and you can go ahead and pay online. Is it only Psych 1000 I can do? Which semester is business law for? All right, that business law is when you're in um, second year. So um, don't go down into the, into the other rows, please. Just stay in row one and we just put Psych in row two because it couldn't hold in row one. I'm just asking students if they could just follow. All right, so there is a banking and finance question about 1004, which you won't, Sharona, are you on still? Yes, Sharona? I'm seeing her, but I'm not hearing her. Anisha, correct me if I'm wrong, will students be able to do 1004 if they have not yet done 1003? No, it's a prerequisite for it. So for the banking and finance student, you won't be able to do the 1004 right now. Okay, I paid for... Someone says, I paid for my ID during summer school, but did not get it. Will I have to pay for my ID again? Do you have your receipt? I don't think you should pay for it again. Again, yeah, once you have your receipt. Because the IDs are usually, they don't expire after one year, so you should be able to. So banking and finance semester one courses are phone 1013, econ 1000, yes. and, and account 1005. Right, right. Those are the three banking and finance courses for semester one. So Jadon Hunter, that's correct. And to Vanessa, when can we start registering for the courses? You can register now. Once you had accepted your offer and your um, ID number is live, 
the date of birth, using the date of birth, year, month, day, you can go on and try registering for your courses, those three courses. Um, so for banking and finance, it's principles of Econ 1, Econ 1000, Found 1013, and ACCT 1005. And for all other majors, the same, or if you don't have the ELPT or the CAPE 1 and 2 or CXC 1, Psych 1000, Econ 1000, and ACCT 1005. Okay, and someone is asking, well, there have been two questions about how long does the override take? Uh, all right, for the override, we always like if you would just shut us an email and bring it to our attention and we'll just um, process it as soon as it comes to our attention. Thank you. But we do go in um, like at intervals, Anisha and myself, and process these overrides, especially on a Friday evening before class, we always go on and do it. I'm not seeing the box to add classes, says Vanessa. And after we answer Van Vanessa, Okay, Ms. Kelly is asking, how are mature students treated? I have a B in English. Do I have to do EPLT in the first semester? Yes, you would still have to do the you would still have to do the ELPT and get um a one in it for you to qualify to do the phone 1013. We only teach phone 1013 in weekend school because of the time. But if you have the time and you don't have the two, we can ask permission. And you only got a two, we can ask after you've got, gotten a two in the LPT, we can ask permission for them, for you to get a campus restriction override for you to do it in this, in the, um, in regular school, but only that one because they are insisting that you do that course, pass that course before you complete your first year. But we only do 1013 in weekend school. Okay, uh, Mr. Wilson has his hand up. Go ahead, Romario Wilson. Hi, good morning again. Good morning. Um, just a bit of clarity. All right, so based on what I'm hearing, um, just ensure I'm on the right path. So for banking and finance students, the courses that we're supposed to register for, for the first semester are um, from 1013, Econ 1000 and ATC 1005. Is that correct so far? Yes, correct. All right, so I would have gotten a grade two in English. Um, I would assume based on the information, mm -hmm. I'm not able to do the phone 1013, so I'd have to do the EL, PT first. Y yes. Okay, and the next registration date for that, well, or the exam for that would be in December. So I would have to do what um, in the meantime, because based on what is what was said, I have to do three courses. So what would I do um, in the interim? You're hearing me? I'm hearing you, Mr. Wilson. You want to repeat the last part of your question? Sure. So we so, right. So I was saying, seeing that I would have gotten a grade two in CXC English, um, that wouldn't qualify me for the phone 1013. So what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Okay, I would assume can. that I would have to do it, um, the phone 1030 in the following semester, because I have to do it in year one. That's right. Did you do, are you waiting for um, communication studies results? No. Okay, Ken, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I, I'm here. Um, let me, let me get some clarification on the 
1004 versus the 1003. Okay, and get back to you on that one. Okay, okay and if we you. don't get all your questions today, you can always email and we'll address them via email as well. Uh, there is another course about what are the courses for accounting students? And so lots of questions. So I think this takes us into our academic counseling segment of the program. So I would thank everyone for coming today. Uh, Colin asking you. Yes. Answer a question for me. Hello. Uh, can you're on um okay i'm on lisa okay so before we officially close the program and allow those of you who have more questions for academic counseling i would ask the lecturers in the room to introduce themselves to the students I know I have seen Sharona. Lisa, I think everyone left. The lecturers have yeah. left already. I think they have left. Okay, so you'll meet them in class. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I know you may have an information overload, but as the, the time goes by, you'll become more familiar with the interface of SAS, of RVLE, all the things that Ms. Crary showed you. The more you do them, the more you'll become familiar with them. And if you have any doubts about using them, we will guide you through. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Sadlow. She says the library looks forward to working with you all and she's wishing you a good semester. Wishing you a good semester too as well. So everyone, thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your day. Please keep safe. Follow the protocols and those of you who have specific questions may stay behind and ask them as Ms. Henry and Ms. Query will guide you through. And for those of you who want our quiz questions, we will contact you. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you very much, Lisa. Okay. Come in. Hi again, everyone, and all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Hi, Cam. It's Philan. Um, I was told that I'm supposed to be registering for summer school. Um, how do I go about that? Hello. I was seeing answer. Just stay right there. Come in. Come in. Okay. Please. All right. Thank you. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take you individually into a different session so we can help you. 
Okay. Okay. 